Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's talk is given by Kevin Haesong Sheridan. Tonight's uh, topic is being of service versus being of help. I was in a meeting the other day, listening to some side chatter. And in the meeting, I heard one of the speakers differentiate between the phrases being of service and being of help. The difference, as it was pointed out, lies in the reason for the act. And as I researched this further, I began to understand the deeper meaning. Sri Chimoy, an Indian spiritual leader, states that the moment we use the term help, a kind of egocentric idea enters into us. If we help someone, that means they are, or we are, in a superior position, and the person we're helping is not. When we help, we feel that we are one step ahead or one step higher than the ones that we are helping. But when we serve someone, then we offer our capacity with humility on the strength of loving concern and oneness. So let's use the proper term service. I liked what I read. So I did some more research and I came across a wonderful article. Rachel Naomi Raymond, she's an MD, Associate Clinical Professor in Family Community Medicine at UCS and Medical School, and co founder and director of the Common Cancer Health Program. I couldn't help but laugh. Not when it's ended, and the fact that she's part of a health program. Uh, but she is the author also, as a Buddhist, of an article called Helping, Fixing, or Serving. If you haven't read this article, I highly suggest looking for it online and giving it a read. And in the article, in which she adds a third option, fixing, she states that helping, fixing, and serving represent three different ways of seeing life. When you help, you see life as weak. When you fix, you see life as broken. When you serve, you see life as a whole. Fixing and helping are really generated from the ego. And service is the work of the soul. It's your true self. So while it may seem like semantics, helping and serving represent different ways of seeing the life of those you give assistance to and whether you're doing it for them or yourself. Again, when you help, you see another as we not have the same strengths you have. Are you then helping them for your sake? That's helping is not a relationship between equals. When you serve, you see another as a whole being, as an equal. So shameless him. If you're looking for instant gratification, out of the act that you're doing, and you may be in the wrong mode. Service rests on the teachings that Buddha gave us to give service to those that suffer. When we serve, we make a connection with the spiritual life. There's no difference with duality. All suffering is our suffering. All happiness is our happiness. As we awaken in our Buddhist practice, the urge to serve comes forward naturally. And without doubt, as we embrace a new way of being able to look around us and see us. Gil Frosdale, a Buddhist, in his article called The Joy of Giving, Generosity, and the Instant Karma that Generates, discusses this in terms of giving of oneself. He states, the Buddhist stress that the spiritual efficacy of a gift is dependent not on the amount but rather in the attitude in which it's given. A small donation that stretches a person with little means is considered of greater spiritual consequence than a large, a personally insignificant donation from, say, a wealthy person. But at its most basic level, dana, a Pali word for giving, in the Buddhist tradition, means giving freely without expecting anything in return. The true act of giving is purely out of compassion or goodwill. 
what a desire for someone else's well being. Perhaps downer is more about how we are than what we do. Through generosity, we cultivate a generous spirit. Generosity of spirit usually leads to generosity of action. But being a generous person is more important than any particular act of giving. After all, it is possible to give without being a generous act. This is a fiction commonly held by many. Now we can only serve others when we have enough resources, such as time, funds, mental, emotional, spiritual stability to do so. I'm not sure if I've described this belief. I believe that when we serve, there is a force that provides a support for us. Um, some call this in the, the, the new generations paying it forward. Um, <laughs> I just kind of think of it as karma. But whatever you want to call it, I believe it exists and it's real. And I like to think of it more like a, the town. For me, this is one of the more the laws of nature of sharing. Sharing a service come from within you know, one of the spiritual tools and our um, Buddhist toolkit that we uh, buckle up and belt on, hopefully every day. And, you know, we help that by that way, by all in some sorry, to initiate happiness, tranquility, and appreciation in our lives, regardless of our own personal circumstances. However, it's funny, when you're of service, sometimes it improves your situation as well. Interesting how that works. Other authors have actually talked about this in their good works as well. Kahil Gibran, author of The Prophet, speaks of this when he says, everyone has a purpose in life, a unique gift or a special talent to give to others. When we blend this unique talent with service to others, we experience the ecstasy and exaltation of our own spirit, which is, of course, the ultimate goal of all goals. Deepak Chopra states, when you combine the ability to express your unique talent in service to humanity, then you make full use of the Lord of Dhamma. And coupled with experience of your own spirituality, the field of pure potentiality, there is no way you will not have access to a limited abundance because that is the real way abundance is achieved. It's not temporary, it's permanent because of your unique talents, your way of expressing it and your service and dedication to your fellow human beings, which you discover through asking the question, how can I be of service instead of what's in it for me? Now it tells therefore, as we go through our daily lives, is to cultivate this practice that connects and binds us to what we are already connected to. So I'm asked to sometime to speak of service. And what he would say, only don't know. How can I be of service? It's really not more complicated than that. Thank you.